so how did how did you get started then? Like what like how did how did that happen? Because you started in what nineteen eighty five. Close the end of nineteen eight uh, August of nineteen eighty four. Okay, so All right. out of high school, um, such a typical story from the eighties. Living in Hollywood, working two jobs, no money. The MG midget, if anyone remembers those from the eighties, that was <laughs> always broken down. Cute as fuck that little car, but just a piece <laughs> of shit. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I'm like waiting for a friend to pick me up, like on the corner of Franklin and Oregon, where my building was. And this hot guy pulls over, like total surfer looking, looking dude, you know, and he pulls over in his white Trans Am with the gold eagle on the hood and nice. the T-tops and the sheepskin seats. Man, it was, I mean, it was so 80. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, was a very pretty lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a guy from White Snake just showed up. It, but it was a guy in the business, Greg Rome. He was a total like muscle surfer looking guy. Yeah. Blonde hair, deep tan, you know, the the million dollar veneer smile, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I was waiting, you know, in his car for my girlfriend to pick me up. And he's like, oh, you know, you're so pretty. You should get into figure modeling. And I'm like, you know, looking at my feet. Like, yeah. I, I yeah. thought it was like, body parts like you know the the dove palmella or what you know i didn't and i was so young and naive and then he's like no like this and he pulls out like a magazine from the back and i hustler what the you know i've heard of that magazine yeah yeah you know, and he like has the paper clip to his layout with crystal breeze beautiful uh exotic dark hair girl from the time okay you know i'm like like i'm like uh, kind of turned on but he wants me to do this like because you know and and i gave me the agent's card and i'm like tucking it in my you know back pocket of my denim mini skirt and fuchsia pink top yeah and hot wheels and um you know and i'm like oh, i could never do that and then like a month or two later i'm like getting those like bills in the mail and you could see through the envelope the big red stamp past due yeah you yeah know? <laughs> the landlord's like, Christy, uh, your rent's been due for two weeks. You know, and I'm like, maybe I'll just do like a magazine layout. And I call the agent and the next day I went in and ta-da, 39 years later, here I am. Yeah. You know, it was fun that, that you know, it, it was a great time. It was fun. I was naive. I learned so much about sex. I'd never been with a girl. I'd never been with two guys. I'd never done anything interracial. I mean, I hadn't been with that many guys to begin with. I'd never done a gangbang. And it's you're in a very safe, controlled environment. Okay. And it was great. I loved it. Nice. Well, and and I feel like, because that's interesting, because I don't know if there are people that think that maybe porn was less safe at one point back then, where, because, na and I, I, because I don't know, uh, like, I don't know if th there wasn't, I don't know if there was standardized, in, you know, industry testing back then for, to make sure that, okay, so there wasn't. I know that oh. there was, there was one performer from that era, I forgot what her name was, she had short hair, I think she was one of the, kind of the, the, the main, draw, like, driving forces to create like standardized testing for for performers. I forgot what her name was. That Sharon Mitchell. That they thank you. Yeah, it was Sharon. Yeah, Dr. Sharon Mitchell. That came around in the mid. No, probably like ninety six, ninety seven. Maybe okay. that's mid to late nineties. No, you know. And here's the thing. Back in the eighties, you had twelve performers. I mean, you had a little. You know, someone tried to get in, they couldn't get it up for the camera. Yeah. Like the girl that came in, her husband found out two months later, she was gone. Yeah. Uh, you had a core group of a dozen performers. You had Tracy Lords, Ginger Lynn, Christy Canyon, Amber Lynn, uh, you know, and, and a, a good dozen girls. Yeah. That were solid performers working every day. You had 10 solid male performers, Peter North. Tom Byron, Mark Wallace, Ron Jeremy, Dan T. Man. Uh, was this post? Was this post John Holmes? Would he? Was he already out of it by then? He, I got in in late '84, and he was he was on his way out for the okay. most. Part. All right, yeah, yeah. So, so you had these guys and girls that were working every 
fucking day. They couldn't find enough talent for the appetite of the consumers now that VHS was like, we don't have to go to the pussycat. I can go to the video store and buy this for $99 or rent it for $8.99 a night. You know what I mean? So the companies were constantly shooting Every day we'd work. I mean, there was like an eight month period where I think I worked 29 days out of the month, whether it was wow. magazines, because magazines were huge too. Jugs, Velvet, Swank. I mean, there were so many. So, Sid, my point of this rambling is because we were working so much. The last thing we had time to do was fuck on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So either, either there was no worry that you were going to be with somebody else that could potentially give you something. It was rare. I remember one girl got something, and I won't say who because I loved her. And yeah, she yeah, called yeah. Me and she's like, I fucked some guy last night or two nights ago, and I got whatever it was. I can't remember. Nothing major, though. Gonorrhea or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something. So, something curable. <laughs> Correct. That's a better way to put it. So everyone was very aware of, you know, that. Yeah. And so nothing, thank God, in the 80s ever blew up in our face. OK, OK. Well, and, yeah, because if it sounds like if you if the if the talent pool was already so small anyway, if it was just maybe 20 or 30 people total, it's a lot easier to met to to to. to to deal with that as opposed to thousands or hundreds. I mean, now, and it's, it's hard to imagine there was a time when the industry was that tight knit in that way where. Tight knit, And it, it was great. Like, and these guys don't forget it was obviously pre Viagra or whatever they oh, use. Yeah. Now. Oh yeah. 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 And the dick or, you know, so they couldn't be fucking around at a club all night because no. they had one, not two, but maybe three scenes to shoot the next day. I remember like I'd, I'd do Peter North and he'd be like, all right, babe, I got to go. I got to haul ass to canning country and shoot a scene for Bruce seven. You know? And that was like, they had a, God only knows what was going through their minds to constantly be hard and give a good solid pop shot. Yeah. But they, so they definitely weren't out there, you know, cruising the bars at night. They had to save that load for, you know, three shots the next day. Yeah. The, the one type, the one type of guy that's like, yeah, you can't mess around before your job. Cause you know that there's, they always say that for athletes to, to not have sex before like a, uh, you know, a game or a fight or something because right. you know, and I'm just like thinking to myself, I don't know how good you can do if you've got blue balls or something to, to perform. I feel like that'd be really, really distracting, but yeah.